state. It was really uncomfortable to be in silence. It was really uncomfortable to be around like l continuous low frequency sound, like the sound of a, um, like the sound of a fluorescent light. Um, it was also difficult to be in loud sound, like at a movie theater, at an action movie. I couldn't really go to like loud movies or be in really, really busy, loud um, restaurants. So those are some of the things. But again, like, like those, that's still hard, but it's kind of like, okay, I can still live. Like I can still um, live my life. I'm just limited somewhat. So then after the class was over, um, my disequilibrium came back full force. Um... I tried to start the second yoga class and by the third, maybe the fourth class, I just knew like, oh my God, this is so painful. I'm sitting here trying to meditate and I'm, my brain is like attacking me. Like I'm having, um, extreme de depersonalization, which is the sensation that you're leaving your body or not, you're not in your body. I'm having extreme derealization. Um, I can't emphasize enough that these feelings are not, um, they're not like funny or um, interesting. They're extremely excruciating, um, like utter torture. And your all you want to do is just leave whatever scenario is creating that, like is emphasizing that symptom. So I was like, well, I'm not going to continue this teacher training because why would I do this when it's like only causing me pain? Like I'm not going to, I don't want to push through something like this. It matters. It matters too much to me. So, um, I left the class, but I should say that my parents, before that happened, um, left California to live in Florida, and, um, I was living with my grandma at the time, and that, that relationship was really tumultuous, because my grandma and me aren't, like, ever been super close, and, um, how do I err on the side of, like, not giving away too much information, um, she didn't actually have all the information about what was going on with me. It's really hard to talk to anybody about this because when you talk about anything having to do with um, prescription or medications for mental illness, people just, they stop listening. They, they're they listening, but they already have made an assumption that you are like, you don't really understand what's going on for yourself. You don't have good self-awareness, that you are mentally ill, um, that you're crazy and, and the list goes on and on. And there's really not, at that point, there's not a lot of dialogue because people don't really want to sit there and educate themselves about an issue. Um, so it's just the conversation really just ends super fast. Um, so I, I didn't put my situation out for a lot of people to discuss it because I, I already kind of knew what was ha happening to me at some point. And uh, it didn't seem like a dialogue. So... Um, so she didn't really understand what was going on. So I'm with my grandma. My folks have left, which is like kind of my support system. So I'm vulnerable. Then I've had to leave this yoga class and a business class that I signed up for because I physically could not stand the sound that I was like the lack of sound, the meditation, the echoey space. And um, I was having a bit of um, and then just like the social ramifications all made my symptoms way worse. And then I had this argument with my grandmother and I ended up leaving her house to go stay with my best friend, my ex-girlfriend, who's now my best friend um, in San Diego. And uh, I'm with her and we go, go to get my food stamps um, like reimbursed. And I'm downtown, I'm in downtown San Diego in a high rise. And I don't know if you've ever been to a food stamps office, but they're already kind of like desperate. There's just like a sense of desperation where people are trying to feed their families and um crying babies and just every make and model of person you know trying to get food if you are a person who believes like that these are entitlements please pay a visit to a food stamps office because you will see the probably the most desperate accumulation of people that you will ever encounter um so I'm there, I sit down to fill out my forms, and all of a sudden I had the same feeling of leaving my body, um, and then I started having a new symptom, kind of a new reaction, where the sound in the room was like here. So everything I was experiencing was attacking me. Um, sound became like 
daggers. Like just, it was so, so painful. I jolted. I had my first like brain, I, we call them brain zaps mm-hmm. on benzodiazepine recovery um, sites. Brain zaps. Mine feel like the brain is so overloaded by sensory information. It can no longer stay in like a homeostasis static place. So it jolts because it's trying to like protect you. Um, and also there's probably some, something to do with like the ego mind is like, can't understand why it's not there anymore. So it freaks out. That's really my, my analysis of these, of that particular symptom. So I started crying. I ran out of the room. Um, a security guard came over and said, you know, this girl has agoraphobia, like back off. We need to get her a separate room. I was really appreciative of her, um, her, just her knowledge. I mean, I don't think I have agoraphobia. I'm not afraid of anything. I think I have symptoms from a medication. Um, so ultimately, um, I started having extreme, extreme sound, um, sensitivity. And the biggest thing I forgot to mention is somewhere along this journey, after I came back to San Diego, I, my cousin, I posted something about benzos and like, how they're so dangerous because I knew some of this was like res- a result of that. But after I had an MRI, I had tons of tests. I had an EKG, um, blood tests, rheum- rheumato- or rheumatologist tests, um, vestibular testing to test my inner ears and um, for, for balance because I was having, oh, I had vision, vision tests for vision therapy. I had every single test you can probably possibly have and I'm as healthy as a horse on paper and yet I'm experiencing symptoms that are um are analogous to what some people describe having severe cancer or multiple sclerosis so um I posted something on Facebook and my cousin signed me up for a benzo group online and all of a sudden the more I shared on these benzo groups the more I realized there are a ton, there are thousands of people in the world, all over the world. I've met people from England, India, New Zealand, you friggin' all over the US, the UK, you name it. Um, I said England, so the UK, but uh, that are suffering from benzodiazepine withdrawal. And the symptoms are so similar down to the last minute detail that I knew conclusively that um, what was happening to me was from that medication. And I would say that if the details weren't so specific, I would still wonder, but they're so, so specific. Um, The types of thoughts people are having, the types of impulses, the types of sound sensitivity, light sensitivity, balance issues, disequilibrium, um, derealization, depersonization, um, skin sensitivity, gastrointestinal sensitivity, basically a slew of, of side effects that if we, you know, if you didn't have the internet and you couldn't connect with people, you would definitely just think, wow, like I'm dying. Like I'm, I'll be dead any day now because I have to have a terminal illness. So that's, that's basically where you're at. Um, so thank God thank the universe that my cousin hooked me up with that page. And then I ended up finding more and more pages and I finally found a recovery group I really resonate with and I really trust the people on it and feel safe um, to talk to them. So after that experience at the food stamps office in San Diego, um, I became, I'm going to call it agoraphobic, but that's not really the proper terminology, but we'll just use that for the sake of time. So I could hardly leave my house. Um, I could could not go into, to a grocery store anymore to go get food. I needed somebody to come with me and help me get food. Um, I could not walk without a cane anywhere. Um, and I knew ultimately I needed to move to Florida to be with my parents because I was so sick and unable to help myself, unable to make a meal. And I was in bed pretty much most of the day at my grandmother's house, who at this time is just like, oh my God, baffled that I'm this, I'm this sick and this is this serious. And she has two grandchildren who have gone through this. So that's pretty, that's pretty shocking. Um, so 
ultimately I was really lucky because my best friend said she'd go with me to the airport to take me to Florida. And I knew I wouldn't be able to get here where I am right now in Florida without her having gone with me. So I'm super thankful because I would have definitely like fainted in the airport. There's no way I would have been able to get through it alone. I had to use a wheelchair and I had to be assured that I would um, have first priority getting on the plane so that I could sit in the back. And I took melatonin to just conk out because I knew if I experienced everything that was happening to me, I, I would have ended up in the hospital and they would have put me on a benzodiazepine, which started this issue um, from the get-go. So, and I have a real lack of trust, obviously. I hope, understandably, I have a real... There's no trust in me now for these medications. There's no space in my, in my heart to be open-minded to a medication that when you come off of it, it destroys your life. You know, it's one thing to have panic attacks, and it's quite another to have not be able to leave your home <laughs> at all or, like, feed yourself. I mean, it, I'm not, like, trying to be dramatic, but it's the, it is the most dehumanizing thing I've ever experienced, will ever experience, uh, like, sign my name on the dotted line, and I'm not even the worst off of the people that I've talked to online who are not being taken seriously because the people think that they're crazy. So, um, luckily she came with me. I got through it one piece. I was like jolting, like I was ha practically having a seizure, but I got, I got to Florida and I've been here for two months now. And, um, I've had a couple more like incidences like the food stamps office, um, that have intensified the side effects. Um, so with each kind of like incident, public incident comes an onslaught of new side effects or intensified side effects. Um, it's just recently that I've had a couple of little windows and, um, that's, I think that's, has a lot to do with communication on my recovery group about certain types of, um, like just advice on diet. Um, it, I guess like really fishy, oily f fish are really good. Um, we've been trying like sardines in our group, which is kind of like an ongoing inside joke, which is becoming really fun, kind of humorous. Um, but sardines, salmon, um, anything just like high in omega-3s. Um, also, it's been said that um, uh, grass-fed dairy and grass-fed meat are really good um, sources of omega-3, I think, and omega-7. So just getting really good um, sources of fat in your body can help with the disassoci disassociation. Maybe it's coincidental, but hey, I, I was telling somebody I would pretty much inject sardines if I thought it would help me out of this nightmare, you know, suspended animation state. Um, so that's really the only thing we've come up conclusively in our group that um, that type of diet can help. There's not any con conclusion about um, supplements. I've taken a lot of supplements but I'm realizing that I prefer to get my, my vitamins and nutrients from the food that I eat because hopefully most of these foods are marked so that I understand what, where they're coming from and how they've been treated. I'm, I'm filming a video. Is Zizu in there? He is, yeah. Uh, Zizu is our cat. Um, so that's the only really advice I can give about like supplements, like I think, I think vitamin D, vitamin C, omega, fish oil are probably like, okay, just make sure that they're not come, that the pill that they're in is not like a synthetic, um, ton of, ton of water, eating slowly, um, I want to list all the symptoms I have now, but some of them feel so dehumanizing that I honestly don't, I feel like I, I want something to be private because I kind of, sometimes I just kind of feel filleted. Like I feel like this experience has taken pretty much everything away from me. And then I also have to like, 
beg for help with disability because people don't believe you. And um, I've had to like 